Thanks to everyone for attending this press availability via Zoom uh, as we continue to work toward bringing this pandemic under control. Uh, today I'm announcing that King County is ready to provide interim financing to the Washington State Convention Center to help it continue construction and complete this important project. This action is designed to preserve many hundreds of family wage construction jobs at a difficult time for workers and for our economy, as well as to prepare our region to take advantage of economic growth when the pandemic is behind us. It's no secret that uh, I have long championed the Convention Center as a regional asset. Uh, the Convention Center, which I'll remind you, is a King County Public Facilities District. It's in the middle of a $1.9 billion expansion that will boost our hospitality industry and keep our economy humming. One of the consequences of the coronavirus is the temporary devastation of the travel and tourism business. That is particularly bad news for the convention center, which is financed by bonds repaid by future lodging taxes. The convention center now faces a $300 million financing crunch that threatens to mothball the project and put future economic development at risk. I'm not going to sit by and watch that happen. Instead, King County is considering uh, all the tools at its disposal, including a $100 million loan to the convention center that would be paid back with interest at the rate of 1%, which matches the rate of return on our investment pool. The investment pool uh, currently stands at $3.4 billion. So this proposed $100 million loan is a relatively small amount, but it would make a tremendous difference in our region. This is good and compelling public policy. Using whatever financing is at our disposal to save jobs and make us more economically competitive. The pandemic has caused economic stress across our region, our state, and our nation. I'm encouraged that after many months of inaction and unresponsiveness, with increasingly tragic consequences, a bipartisan group of congressional leaders is raising hopes for federal assistance. And now Senator McConnell and the White House must get on board. We need the federal government to help the American people. That is their job and they must step up to it. Meanwhile, here in King County, we must take whatever action we can to preserve jobs, to develop our economy for that day when we finally turn the page on this pandemic. We have a number of speakers available today, and I would like to begin with uh, King County Council Member Jean Cole Wells, the chair of the Council Budget Committee and the Executive Finance Committee. Uh, Council Member Cole Wells. Thank you, Executive Constantine. I'm pleased to be with you today. And perhaps at no other time in our region's history has it been more critical to fight tooth and nail to save every existing family wage job. And I believe we have a fiscal duty to, to do everything it takes to keep this project moving forward for our jobs, but also for going forward in our economic recovery from the pandemic. Uh, in 2017, I sponsored the ordinance that approved the $275 million sale of the county-owned Convention Place Transit Station to the Washington State Convention Center. This is a major step toward the expansion of the Convention Center and the expansion of our economy. But as we all know, very sadly, our region is suffering economically in the wake of this coronavirus, especially in our tourism industry. And over the five COVID budgets that the council approved, passed, that, was, that were sent over by the executive, we provided $8 million for the tourism industry, as well as over $15 million for our arts, culture, science organizations, because people want to come here because of them and because of our beautiful environment. Uh, but now, 
we as a regional government, along with our state and city partners, have the opportunity to make sure this vitally important project is able to go ahead. In turn, we will be able to maintain thousands of construction jobs and put ourselves in a position to, back, to bounce back quickly once the pandemic and subsequent recession are behind us. I see this as not only an, as an investment that will help us right now, but will pay dividends for decades to come. I hear from constituents, from businesses, from workers who are in the hospitality industry and they're desperate for customers and work. By not delaying the development of this world-class structure, we can say to them that we are committed to bringing back people to this region and we know how critical the tourism industry is to our region. And there's no other entity that plays a more important role than the Convention Center. The ordinance I sponsored in 2017 also committed the Convention Center to contribute funds for the construction of affordable housing on site or to provide those funds to the King County, to King County to be used for affordable housing in the county. So not only is this action necessary to keep the construction of this project going, it is an essential investment to ensure that we are able to continue to fulfill much needed affordable housing options in our region. So I look forward to working collaboratively with the Executive Constantine. I really appreciate his announcement today and with my council colleagues and state and regional leaders to ensure the convention center expansion is not mothball. Just think of what that would be like and that we are able to complete this addition to our world-class facility that will serve an econo as an economic engine and attraction for generations to come. Thank you. And now we're uh, honored to have with us uh, the leader of the Martin Luther King County Labor Council, Nicole Grant. Thank you, Dow. And thank you to everybody who's here covering this issue. I really hope you uh, take the opportunity to go on the tour this afternoon and see how truly vast um, and incredible this project is. I think that for anybody who's driven down I-5 through the city in the last year, year, they can really see that this project is a big deal. It's a big deal for our area, for our economy, for our culture, and for the workers here in Seattle and King County. I want to especially thank King County Executive Dow Constantine and Council Member Jeannie Colwells. Um, this is an amazing announcement and your leadership in this area is truly inspirational at a time like this. This is the kind of leadership we want to see at every level of government. The truth is, when it comes to expanding this convention center, we cannot stall now. We cannot stop. There are thousands of jobs on the line. And I think about everybody in our community during this pandemic, all the people who can't work right now, who are out of work, and every single person that's holding down a job at the convention center is holding up a family and holding up a community. So whether it's the electrician or the painter, the crane operator today, or the banquet server, or the stage hand a year from now, for labor and for unions, Getting this convention center project over the finish line is a massive priority and is completely worth it. Thank you so much, Nicole. Thank you uh, to all of our workers who are helping uh, bring this project forward and those who will then uh, work in it to serve those visiting our region. Uh, speaking of visitors, a representative of the visitor industry is next. Tom Norwalk is the president and the CEO of Visit Seattle. Tom. Thank you, Executive Constantine, and uh, really a thank you to King County, uh, Council Member Cole Wells, Council Member uh, Rod Dombowski, and all of the council 
that has been working so hard in providing funding for COVID relief in all different parts of the needs the community has and the county has. Uh, we've learned painfully uh, so well that recovery, reopenings are gonna take a long time. These last 10 months have been brutal to the county and to the industry and to workers. Uh, and recovery we know will be three to four years away. This project is a cornerstone of recovery for the future. Since groundbreaking uh, in 2018, our organization, working closely with the Convention Center uh, in national sales and marketing, we've seen excellent demand for future groups and conventions. We actually have 32 confirmed conventions booked into the summit for the 2022 and future period, and more booked in the arch. So the future is critical to us. This is a large segment of the travel and tourism uh, fabric that our county and our state enjoys. It's critical for our region that construction continues. Attendees and delegates that attend national meetings, regional meetings, spend money in the city, in the region, arts and culture. They spend money in attractions uh, and restaurants. And we know that those entire segment of people are hurting right now. As we look to reopen, as we look towards recovery, we need to invest in this type of a project that only comes around once in a lifetime. Uh, this has been a long time coming and it would be a tragedy to have this not be completed. Hundreds and hundreds uh, and thousands of small businesses broadly rely on visitors. And uh, I thank you for taking this effort, uh, making this effort as a start and uh, we wanna see it completed. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, we're also uh, joined by a representative of the Seattle Building Trades, the folks who are on site every day in good weather and bad, uh, creating this new asset for our community. It's Executive Secretary Monty Anderson. Thank you, Dal, for your leadership on this issue, and, and Jeannie Cowells, it's great to see everybody here on the call. Uh, as Dow said, uh, I have the pleasure of representing uh, over 20,000 workers here in King County, but over a thousand on the convention center. And just to let you know um, what the convention center is, it's not just a job for us, but it's, it, these are careers. We have a lot of, the convention center has gone out of the way to attract a lot of women and people of color into the apprenticeship programs and put them to work on there. We owe these people the ability to work and bring back uh, a fair wage to their family. Can you imagine us shutting this down, 60 to $70,000 a day lost out of the economy out of working class people's hands. You know, I realize that there's a lot going on with this pandemic and a lot of it we can't solve, but this is something that can be solved. This is something we can do. A lot of the stuff is out of our hands. So the leadership you're seeing from King County is what we should be seeing all across the country. I'm not gonna hold my breath on that, but I know we have good governance here. So we have a problem, we have the, uh, the moxie to fix it, and we have the leaders that can do it. So uh, I have all my confidence in Down Constantine and in the city and the King County Council, along with Matt Griffin and everybody at the convention center who's running a top-notch project. So our hands are in your hands and we trust you and we're hoping for a uh, solution to this issue because it's important to everybody. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Monty, and thanks to all of your members who are doing the hard work every day to bring this project successfully to completion. It's our pleasure. Uh, and now it's my uh, pleasure to introduce, uh, as our final speaker, the uh, aforementioned Matt Griffin. Uh, he is the guy who is putting all the pieces together, the managing partner of the Pine Street Group. He is the developer of the convention center, Matt. Thank you, Dallin. Thank you for your leadership and thank you, Councilman Colwells, for your leadership. Uh, yeah, I, I have the fortunate position of heading the team at Pine Street Group. Uh, our team has worked very hard on this project. It, you know, I, I look back and I, in May when we had a press conference to talk about our financing crisis, and we said that if we didn't have a plan by the end of the year, we we're going to have to close, start closing down the project. That seemed like a long ways off. It seemed like we had lots of time for actions. But now we find ourselves less than 30 days from the end of the year at a time when if we don't have a financing plan by the end of December, we're gonna to have to start the process of basically closing the project down. 
So this comes as especially important, this leadership from King County as the start of putting pieces together to allow us to have the interim financing. But I want to underscore part of what Monty said too. It's not, you know, if we close it down in the spring, we'll have about a thousand construction workers on the site. But on this project, when we planned it two to three years ago, we went out of our way to basically plan it for a diverse community. I mean, we have about 30% people of color on the job, 25% from priority zip codes, 17% from uh, apprentices. We have over $100 million in 100 different contracts with women and minority owned businesses. These are the people that will get put out of work. And they're the people, at least personally, I feel in our pandemic are the ones that have suffered the most. And it would be such a shame for those construction people to basically be shut out of jobs. So I care about it in my job. I care about wanting to finish the project. I care about wanting to have a tool for going forward. But I also feel for the people in particular that will be put out of work. So Doug Constantine, Jeannie Cole Wells, thank you for your leadership. Uh, we hope that we have more leadership like that throughout the rest of our community. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. And thank you for your long-term dedication to seeing this important project through. Uh, with that, uh, I would turn to our attendees, our guests, and see uh, if there are any questions. And Chase, if I could ask you to uh, watch for the raised hands and uh, call on people uh, in the order in which they've asked to speak. Um, the first question goes to Chris Daniels. Chris, you should be unmuted. Yes, uh, good afternoon. I, Hi, I guess for, for Dow and for Matt, uh, Tom Norwalk just said that we are three to four years away from recovery. We may not even need indoor gatherings like we used to based on what's going on with the pandemic. So why spend this money and why not just find a way to cut the costs on the existing project and find a way to cut $300 million somewhere else within the project? Well, I can uh, start off with my own uh, uh, take on the situation that uh, we're in now globally. Uh, I think Tom could actually speak to the projections for the visitor industry and Matt can talk about the realities of construction financing and uh, the project that is uh, now uh, well into construction. Uh, but, you know, we're uh, continually hearing people say that because of the pandemic, no one's ever going to return to uh, working in person, that cities are dead, that uh, no one will ever travel, that there will be no conventions. And I think that is all uh, uh, unsupported by what we see and hear all around us. People are anxious to gather again. People are going to travel and people are itching to travel right now, in fact, constrained only by concern about the virus. Uh, and so I believe that there is a bright future for uh, not only individual travel, but business travel and conventions. And uh, the challenge that we have had for a long time with our convention center is that um, while our region is enormously attractive to organizations looking to gather people from around the country and around the world, we have not had sufficient capacity to, to, to accommodate them. Uh, we have had a very undersized convention center compared not just to our peers around the continent, but uh, compared to the demand uh, that we uh, experience of, of people wanting to come to Seattle, King County, and Puget Sound. So, uh, I believe that uh, it is not going to be long before we start to uh, have a really strong recovery in the travel sector uh, as there's pent up demand and people are itching to get out and see the country and the world again. Um, Matt, you may want to talk about the realities of a project that is uh, well along to completion. And then I really do want Tom to talk about the outlook for the visitor industry and for conventions specifically. Uh, Matt. Yes, sir. Well, I mean, first of all, on the, on the cost for the project from the very beginning, we've, heard, we've worked hard to basically make it as cost effective as we can. I, I, at this point in time, it's, you know, I was sort of thinking about it, if asking us to cut costs out of it, it's sort of like saying you need to lose some weight by tomorrow, so I'm gonna cut off your arm. I mean, all of a sudden it's made it useless. 
And we, the, the things that we could do efficiently and still make it work as a convention center, we've done most of those. Uh, we continue to look at those every day. But now it's important to fill out the structure and make sure it's a useful tool as it was designed. I'll turn it over to Tom to talk about the business. Yeah, thank you. And I, and I think Dow's absolutely right. People are pent up demand for travel is huge. And if you look outside of the urban downtown cores and look out around the region, uh, there are people traveling, there are road trips taking place. Uh, I think Chris, you bring up a good point. I think there are different parts of the travel industry that will recover at different times. And I think everybody's pretty well convinced that recovery really starts when vaccines are available and introduced. And so it's a longer window than we might have projected uh, early in this year as things got started. Uh, from the large gathering standpoint though, I think there's strong belief and optimism from a lot of our national planners of the future of large meetings is not going away. Will it change some in the next few years in attendance? Will technology provide some element of hybrid capability that was really not very good before? That's all remains to be seen, but we're still finding a lot of optimism and we have no doubt that travel will flourish again. All right, let's go to our next question. Uh, Essex Porter from Cairo 7. Essex, you should be unmuted. My first question is for uh, Executive Constantine. Uh, Executive Constantine, so many people are hurting in this pandemic. If the county has $100 million to spend, why not use that money to support people directly? And uh, for, yeah, oh, please go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, that's a good question, Essex. And the answer is these are funds that are invested uh, for future use by the county and others. They're invested at a, in a very conservative way. It's about three and a half billion dollars in our investment fund. Uh, and so by providing, by, by loaning this money to a county entity, uh, the convention center, uh, we're able to uh, continue the security of those funds and have them available. They're not funds that we're going to be spending uh, and, uh, and not recovering. We know we will get these funds back from the tourism taxes that are inevitably going to come when people begin traveling again, staying in hotels and paying those visitor taxes. Uh, so it's a bit of an apples and oranges comparison. And for, uh, for Matt Griffin, uh, is this loan going to be enough? As we said in the spring, uh, we have a financing uh, question of about $300 million. So no, this is not enough. Uh, it is one piece and we're hoping that uh, discussions that have started with the city and with the state will allow us to put together a program from those three governmental entities. Thank you both. Thank you, Essex. All right, next we'll go to David Croman. David, you should be here. Yeah, to clarify on that last point, it, it sounded like you were saying, Matt, that um, you would probably need to go to the state. It sounded like you're saying you needed to go to the state and ask for more money. Is that is that what I heard correctly? Well, the the comment is is, is we need a total of three hundred million dollars in financing help, and this financing help is a bridge financing. We have, we have had discussions with both the city, the state, and the county about providing some means of helping us with that loan similar to what the King County is doing. I'm hoping that the, what King County is doing becomes a template that allows us to move forward with those dis other discussions. Thanks, and Executive Constantine, on a scale of one to 10, how confident are you that um, you, the county will get this money back and, and who's on the hook if it does not? Uh, I'm absolutely confident, uh, unless you believe that no one will ever travel to Seattle and King County again, uh, the revenue is already in place, the revenue sources are already in place for the county to be repaid these funds. I believe that the risk is uh, on a par with the risk, which is extremely low with the other investments for our three and a half billion dollar investment fund, and the good that it does for our community in terms of preserving and creating jobs and opportunities for local businesses is enormous. Uh, so it's actually not a tremendously difficult decision, a safe investment that brings uh, 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 excellent returns for our entire community. I'd like to add something on that. It's, it's not solely the convention center we're talking about or the expansion. When people do come here, they need a place to stay. 
they need hotel rooms, whatever. Uh, they buy food in restaurants or stores. They get their hair cut at barber shops. They go to our museums, our world-class museums, our theaters, our science, arts, culture uh, venues. That's so much of what is attracting them to come here, and we want to make sure that they're all poised to be able to open. And that's why the County Council and the Executive have been so supportive of, of our tourism industry, our restaurants, our theaters, everyone, uh, so that we can attract the people here and have a place for them to be able to stay and spend money. That's very important too. All right, next question is for David Gutman. Two questions, if you don't mind. Um, the first is that back in May when you uh, made the made the announcement slash plea that, that the project could be short on funds. It was described as a $1.8 billion project. Um, it's now being described as a $1.9 billion project. So where did that increase come from? And then the second question is for Executive Constantine. Um, you've talked about how confident you are that this is a safe and secure investment. Um, if that's the case, why was the project unable to find a, a bank or a private financer to make, um, make this investment? Matt, do you want to field the first question? Sure, I'll field the first question. 1.8, 1.9. Uh, if, if I, if I, uh, David, if I took the numbers to another uh, digit, uh, in the spring it was 1.83 and now it's 1.87 and about 35 million of that are COVID costs that we're trying to recover. But it's, but it's those pieces. They're, they're one's round, one was rounded down slightly and one's rounded up slightly. And I realize those are big numbers, but again, trying to keep it at the right level of detail. Yeah. And I believe your second question was about confidence in the repayment, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you've described how confident you are that, that this is a safe investment. And mm -hmm. my question, I guess, is just, so why, why isn't there a bank or a private yeah. financing instrument to, to make this investment then? Yeah, well, I'm not the expert on uh, bond financing, but I do know that with the tourism industry having temporarily uh, uh, taken a hit, uh, that bonds secured against tourism money uh, nationally, I believe, have been difficult to place. Uh, the county has uh, the ability, as this is a county agency, to create an interfund loan and to uh, be able to then be ultimately repaid through the tourism dollars. And this is, as uh, Councilmember Cole Wells pointed out, not just about those who are frequenting the convention center and the money that's directly taken in by the convention center, but visitor taxes paid throughout the economy that allow the repayment of this. So I will repeat that unless you think uh, people are going to cease to want to visit Pacific Northwest and King County, uh, the money is going to be there to repay uh, this, this $100 million. Um, it, I, it may be that uh, Matt has a little more insight into the vagaries of the bond market, uh, but that's, I would be out of my depth trying to offer a, a coherent answer to that. Well, yeah, the only other comment I would make is that, is that uh, you, you, cor um, you correctly said it when you said not only is it the returns for the county or the city or the state are not only the interest rate, but they're also for what it does for the people in this community that we all need to keep employed. Uh, it's different than just a Wall Street Journal. It's all about numbers. All right, next question goes to Anna from KUOW. Hi there. Um, in September, Matt, in the addition committee meeting, according to the minutes, you noted there were serious accounting issues in the project. What were those? Have they been fixed? And um, Executive Constantine, what sort of oversight is the county going to provide for this funding? So I, I don't rem well I, I don't remember the exact words, but but the, but the question really became was beca if if I remember correctly the issue, uh, the question was is we were trying it's not accounting about costs the co accounting for all the costs has been with, uh, without a doubt fine it's been audited on a regular basis, the question was about us trying to estimate things that were being talked about and what we thought they would add to the budget, 
and we found out that we had inconsistencies between what we were doing and what the contractor was doing. And we were, at times we both counted the same amount or we might both take the same credit. But it was nothing about the items that had actually been contracted for. It was all about items we were trying to forecast so we could put some numbers on things that were being talked about so that the convention center so understood appropriately what resources they had left to spend. And uh, these funds would be advanced with the uh, with the approval of what's known as the Executive Finance Committee at the county. Uh, Councilmember Cole Wells is actually uh, the chair, the current chair of the Executive Finance Committee. Uh, other members are the Budget Director Dwight Dively and the Finance Director Ken Guy. And that organization is going to make sure that in working with our attorneys. Uh, we will have the appropriate instruments in place to secure these funds uh, and they will be monitoring the work of Matt and the Convention Center team and making sure everything's on track uh, to a successful conclusion. All right, next question from Erica Barnett. Hi, um, a lot of the speakers today mentioned the need to preserve construction jobs and County Executive, uh, you mentioned that it's absurd to suggest that no one will ever travel again, but there's a lot of other sectors that are suffering um, where businesses could also benefit immensely from loans that don't involve, you know, these huge kind of capital expenditures. King County Metro, it's a county agency is facing cuts to bus service. Um, is this giving preferential treatment to a single sector um, when, you know, there are plenty of other um, business sectors that are coming to you hat in hand? So uh, this goes back to, I think, Essex's question. Uh, the investment of county funds uh, from our investment pool into this county agency, the uh, Convention Center PDA, is uh, uh, different than the expenditure, the drawing down of those funds uh, to spend on something where there's no um, uh, source for repayment. And, that would be the case with many other of these investments you're talking about, including even our own Metro. As we spend money providing service, there is no replacement for those funds. So we have, in fact, put uh, many, many tens of millions of dollars out on the street in support of businesses, uh, in support of uh, nonprofit agencies, in support of individuals who are struggling to pay the rent uh, and uh, landlords who are continuing to house folks who are unable to cover uh, the monthly expenses. And uh, the answer to all of this is more is needed. More is needed, uh, particularly from our federal government to get us through this crisis. More is needed from the state government in terms of direct investment and flexibility uh, and we're using all of the tools at our disposal to help get our community and our people through this. This particular tool is well suited to this particular challenge. And this particular challenge uh, happens to have a great deal to do with uh, the future of hundreds, if not thousands of workers who are out there supporting their families and with an entire industry uh, that has provided prosperity for many here in our region. So it is the appropriate investment, the appropriate tool to use in this particular circumstance. Uh, it doesn't apply to many of the other areas where we're also working hard to pull people through. And if I could add to that too, uh, through our uh, council approving five COVID budgets uh, over the last several months, we were able to provide $263 million in federal CARES Act funds, along with FEMA reimbursements coming in still and will be for a while, uh, to support our families, to support, as I mentioned, our arts and culture institutions, food security, healthcare provider grants. Uh, we can go on and on. We deliberated very thoroughly and carefully on where the most need was uh, for those groups that would be eligible for the federal funds. I was on a call today with our federal lobbyist in which it was brought out that there are hearing in Washington, D.C. that uh, a new stimulus recovery package, relief package, will uh, possibly be voted on in the next couple of weeks by Congress. And we, local governments really need those funds. So we 
we're working hard to make sure we have more, but I agree with con uh, the executive that this, this $100 million of a loan financing package would be uh, the suitable way to go and would not be providing favoritism over other groups. We did have one follow-up that was submitted and I, I think you all answered it, but the question was whether this plan needs council approval uh, and I believe you answered that with the Executive Finance Committee. Uh, that's correct. This uh, particular uh, approach uh, requires approval from the Executive Finance Committee, which is this uh, multi-branch uh, entity that oversees the county's investment pool. And uh, we're, of course, working with all of the council members. I believe they've now all been briefed on this, uh, taking their feedback, uh, questions, understanding exactly uh, the level of risk, which is low and the benefits, which are high. And uh, I think that uh, we have a good mechanism in place through uh, this financial oversight group that uh, Councilmember Cole Wells, as the budget chair, uh, is also the chair of this group, uh, to make sure the county is handling these finances in exactly the right way. And that was our final question. Any final closing thoughts? I simply believe that having gone four fifths of the way here in uh, financing and constructing this convention center, uh, that we need to see it through to completion for the good of the people who are working on it now and for those who will work in it and in all the businesses that benefit from it uh, in the years to come. Uh, it is a good and smart investment for our region and it couldn't come at a more important time. Uh, thank you all for being here today. Thanks to everyone who spoke and to all of those who joined as attendees. Take care.